and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Northboro. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen the show, my name is uh, Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney. I do nothing but elder law. I work at Myrick O'Connell. There are 70 of us there. Um, we're the biggest firm outside of Boston. And so as a result, everybody gets to do what they like. I really like elder law, especially now that I'm getting older. But this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary. Uh, if you've seen any of my presentations, you know that they are my model couple, Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal in life is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they live in North Bro, that's where they want to be. They don't want to be in San Diego. They don't want to be in Los Angeles. They want to they be here. And so the point of the show is to let you see the people that you ought to know and the programs you ought to know about if you want to just stay here in North Bro. And to do that, I needed a person that knows everybody. And so I convinced my friend Anita Hagsfield uh, to do this show as my co-host with me. And we've been doing it now for a while. And inevitably, she gets these great guests to help you kind of understand people that you ought to know, people that you ought to know. And Anita's got a person, you got to know this person. So Anita, who, who do you have here today with us? Well, I am very pleased to introduce Agnes Sargerian, who's been a longtime friend member of the Northboro Senior Center, and she's been extremely active for all these years, well over 30, and I think it's just great that she's coming to talk with you about something very special that she's in charge of. So, and, and so would you rather that I call you Ms. Hargerian or Agnes? You can call me Agnes. I can call you Agnes, because it makes me feel younger if I can call you Miss. But I want to call, I'll call you Agnes. So Agnes, we were just talking a little bit before, mm -hmm. and, you, and I was mentioning that, that I really, I had I just had our anniversary, and we were, we were just married 42 years, and you said that you've been married now how, how many years? 69. 69 years. So we're like a kind of a new couple, right? <laughs> but we share the fact we each have three kids, and yours are kind of, you got one away and two that are kind of around here. Mm -hmm. But you said you're not native. You're, you're, you will never be a native. That you, so, so how did you, I'm just as a background, how did you end up coming to Northboro? Well, my husband always worked in the Boston area. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, and, you know, we got to get closer because you're always trying to get up too early, <laughs> catch oh, yeah. the train and get there and then you yeah. get back late. So we came and looked at the houses we went to Cedar Hill. I didn't like those homes. Yeah. We went to Pine. I didn't like those homes. So when we went to Northgate, I liked the houses there because the kitchen was a larger size. The master bedroom was yeah. a larger size. And also we could expand. It had an expansion attic. Right. So. I was pregnant with my second child when we moved there. And, uh, uh, um, that's what we did for our, the main house. It was, my wife was present with the second child. Right? Yeah. So I've been very happy living in Northgate. Yeah. And now, are you still in Northgate? Yes. You must be one of the, one of the more <coughs> senior members of the, there. Uh, at this, at I'm this point. Uh, an original owner of the house, still that's, in the same house. That's great. That's great. And then your husband eventually retired, right? And your, yes. your, kid, your kids have kind of grown up and, and, and moved, moved, right? Mm -hmm. and, and at some point recently, you got involved with the Senior Center. Uh, that, that, was a few, <coughs> that was a few years ago. Yes, that was back in 1989. Back in 1989, yeah. I retired in 88. I was in, uh, worked for New England Envelope Company. Mm -hmm. And I decided there were things I wanted to do in my house. So once I got caught up on the renovations, I said, now what will I do? And I said, well, I think I'll go to the senior center and see if they need volunteer help. So when I went there, Renee McHugh was director at that time. By the way, we should tell the folks that, so if you volunteer for the senior center, it doesn't mean you really have to volunteer for 30 years, you know? No. You can go, <laughs> you know, thinking maybe it isn't quite that permanent. But anyway, so you, no. went to, you went to see a person named Renee McHugh? Yes, she was director then. Yeah, and wh where was the senior center then? It, it was on Center Drive. I see. Yeah. So Renee gave me an envelope full of a lot of material, and yeah. she said to me, have you ever worked with children? I said, well, I had three. 
And I said, and I was a Sunday school teacher. I said, so I have worked with a lot of children. And uh, so she says, will you take this home and read it and see if you can do this work? So I took it home and I looked through it and I said, oh, I can do this. <laughs> and what was she wanting you to do? She wanted me to be an intergenerational coordinator and bring the elderly seniors yeah. in touch with the um, elementary school children and the high schools. And this was 30 students. years ago. That was really ahead of its time. I mean, that's become much that's more great. popular now. Yeah, yeah. So I did it, and I did it for about four years, and then my husband retired mm -hmm. and said to me, I know how dedicated you are every time you do anything. He said, yeah. so how are we going to be traveling if you're going to be on this job? <laughs> so I had to write a letter of, that I was going to resign. Yeah. And Renee tried to get someone else to do it, and they only lasted a week, and that program just went down the drain. Nobody else wanted to carry it on. Right, right. But it was very successful. And I know from your perspective, that must have been a tremendous drop in your income when you, when you stopped doing that program. I bet they were paying you a lot of, a lot of money to do no, that. It was uh, no, I w it was volunteer. No. All volunteer. But don't you find the most important things you do in life are the ones you don't get paid for? Yes. Because the stuff that you do get paid for, other people can do them. No, I right? enjoyed doing it because it was the uh, high school children. We had seven of them. Mm -hmm. And we had uh, nutritionists. We had nurses come in and speak to them. Their, their duty was to visit with shut-in seniors and to, they, they couldn't take them shopping or anything. Yep. They could, if they wanted to walk around their yard, they could take them in, you know, around the yard. But anyway, what they did is uh, either, you know, talked with them or if they wanted to play any kind of a game or anything like that. And they were not, to they could not, you know, open up any of their mail or anything unless they asked them. Right. But, I mean, it worked for a year, because every year we had different students. And then uh, we had a graduation ceremony also. And that was nice. And when you bring some of the, se were the seniors invited to this graduation? So? Yeah, the seniors. I went to Trombettas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I said, I'll get some flowers and I'll make... Uh, Boot, you know, boot, uh, well, for the men, we made the boutonnieres and corsages yeah. for the women. Yeah. So when uh, he asked me what I wanted the flowers for, and I told him, and he said, no charge. That's a wonderful thing you're doing. So he gave me the flowers, and I made the corsages and boutonnieres for the men. That's lovely. And we, so we had a uh, graduation you had party. Graduations. We had a so, graduation so party. So you stepped out of that, and did your husband and you end up doing some traveling? Yeah, we did. That's great. That's to Florida, to Puerto Rico, <laughs> to California. Because his family all lives, most of his family lives in San Diego. I see. I yeah. see. Now, at some point, though, you kind of got more re-engaged with the Senior Center? Yes, I volunteer. I work, also work with Vicki on uh, Mondays. I help with Bistro. Mm -hmm. and, but my main job is the being a coordinator of low vision support group so that I do. Oh. That's, that's wonderful. It's, so what, what have, how does that work? Well, in uh, 1995, when I picked up an Amsler grid because my eye doctor told me that he saw changes in my eye. An Amsler grid? Amsler grid. It looks like mm -hmm. a tic-tac-toe toe and it has a little dark circle. Yeah. And he said, now cover one eye and don't, don't look at the lines, just look at the dark circle. And if you see any wavy lines, you call me immediately. Well, it happened in June of 95. Mm -hmm. I picked the Amsler grid up and looked at it and I saw the wavy lines. So I called and he said, get in here right away. So I went and he, he didn't tell me I have macular degeneration. Mm -hmm. He just said, I'm gonna send you to see a low vision doctor. Mm -hmm. So 
anyway, uh, he gave me the low vision doctor's name and he said, tell him I recommended you. So I went and I think I visited with that low vision doctor three years before I was told that I was now legally blind. Mm -hmm. So um, my daughter found out that there was a study group at a Mass Eye and Ear in Boston. So she signed me up for that and I got calls from them. So I was in a study there for eight years and they give you either, you don't know what you're on, they gave you some different vitamins or placebos, or a placebo, yeah. but they never told you what you were on. Right. But <clears throat> whatever they gave me, <laughs> I had terrible results with it. So things uh, got things got worse. Oh, oh yeah, no, or not my side, eyes. Or just side effects. My, yeah, I had side, side effects. effects. Yeah. Side effects yeah. from it, and um, so it, it was like uh, I, I. It was like something was happening to me, and I didn't know what. <laughs> so. And my husband was, he's an avid golfer, and he was out golfing, and I, so I said, well, I better lay here and wait for him to come home. So when he came home, I, I said to him, something's happening to me. I said, I just don't feel right. So he took my pulse, my pulse was off, and he said to me, just lay here, and it was, happened to be Father's Day when we were supposed to go meet my daughter out in Sturbridge, and, celebrate Father's Day there. So my uh, husband called my daughter and said, we can't come, mom's not feeling well. So <clears throat> I just rested, you know, and my husband put pillows under my legs and, yeah. and, and uh, it took, it took uh, almost another seven to eight hours before I started feeling myself yeah. again. So you must, they must have taken you off those pills then? I well, I assume. called and I told yeah. them, I said, I don't think I can be in the study. And they said, yeah. why? I said, whatever you put me on. I said, I had a bad side effect with it. Well, we still want you to be in the study. So I just stopped taking it. Right. And I was continued in the study. And, um, and I went the whole eight years. And then when the study finished, they wrote letters to let us know what we were on, yeah. and I was on zinc. Zinc. Strong zinc. zinc. <laughs> and it didn't have good effects. It did not, it have, did good not have good effects. Good effects. Yeah. So when did you start doing the, the, the low vision support group? Or did you, did you create that, or was that something in existence? No, I didn't your... create it. I, I joined a group of uh, uh, Beatrice Morris. Mm -hmm. She was a low vision group coordinator in uh, Westboro. And how long ago was that? Oh, you know? That was uh, 13 years ago. Okay. That's when she retired, 13 years ago. And I've been doing it for 13 years. Mm -hmm. So she called me and she said, I want you to join our low vision support group. I said, well, where do you meet? She said, in Westboro. So I did go join and um, there were people that lived in the uh, community that we held our meetings in. Mm -hmm. And then after about so many years, the Westboro people stopped coming and it was just Five of us from Northboro going. Going to Westboro. Yeah. So it was like a night out. Right. You know? So yeah. <laughs> I said, why are we going to Westboro? I said, let me ask Kelly Burke. Right. If she, we can hold our meetings here. Now at that point, was the new center already open, or was? Or, or, yes, it was. Uh, I see. Yeah. So, no, actually, I don't think it was open. No, we were still the old senior center. Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't open. So I said to um, Kelly Burke, I said, can you find a, a, a Thursday? I said, we usually meet second Thursday of the month that we can hold a meeting here. Right. And she said, well, what's it all about? And I explained it to her. And she goes, well, let me see what I can do. And about two months later, she contacted me and said, okay, I got a date for you, she said. and." Um, Fran Weir and uh, Norman 
Cohen are coming here from Mass Association and Commission for the Blind. Mm -hmm. So they want you to come. So I went and they said, this is when the meeting's going to be. And then Fran Weir looked at me and she said, you're going to be the coordinator. Congratulations. <laughs> Another high paying job, right? <laughs> yeah. And I said, I, I said, wait a minute. I said, when B. Morris retired at 80 years old, that's how old I am, I said. <laughs> she well, retired kind of at 80. the torch, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, they said, no, they said, you, you used to substitute for B. Morris, so you really know what it's all about. We want you to do it, Agnes. So I couldn't say no, <laughs> so I did it. So I'm still doing it, so 13 years. And what, what do you do? What is the, what is the, the purpose what, of the support group? It's, it's anyone who ha is visually impaired mm -hmm. in any way, cataracts, or macular degeneration, glaucoma, whatever. They can come to the group. And I find speakers that will help the people with their vision. And sometimes I get excellent doctors who come who are uh, low vision doctors mm -hmm. and then I get uh, uh, um, people who come and speak to us on nutrition that's good for people with low vision and I find people that have a lot to do with other aspects not only with the eyes but anything that's going to affect them because for, they for, can't see. For example. Right. For example, I had a um, nutritionist come and speak, and I also had someone come and speak about um, how, how to become active in their homes without having any trouble. And occupational therapist I've had. So I've had all a kind of uh, speakers coming and speak to the people. So, Recently, I had someone from assisted living. Yeah. I figured that, you know, we're all getting older and we may be at that stage. So that was interesting. So can find. you just, for example, because once again, for one of the reasons for the show is that a, a lot of the people who watch cable, local cable, are seniors. Right. right. And, and, and some of these folks may be folks who, who could really benefit from a lot of this stuff, but just wouldn't have thought, you know, that, that, that such a wonderful thing existed, that they really had this service. Mm -hmm. can, can, do you recall, right. like, for example, can you give any examples of, like, how, you're, how the nutrition stuff would be connected to this? Or for any of the folks who are, for instance, yeah, the occupational uh, uh, therapists, yes. what kind of things they, they're kind of ta they talk about in terms they, of they, adaptations yeah, and stuff? Yes. They talk about the proper foods to eat to, mm -hmm. uh, for your eyes. And they are usually dark leafy greens, mm -hmm. berries, and nuts. Those are good for your eyes. So they tell us, uh, you know, how much quantity we should be eating daily yeah. of these products. And now, now, did you ever have a chef come in to talk about it? The reason why I ask this, we, I, I do a show in Nantucket, and one of the, uh, we had a chef come in, and he was just talking about, you know, kind of designing food, designing meals around things that you really, really need to be eating, you know, a lot of times as a senior. Uh, no, I've never had a chef. Uh, so that you, would be that, interesting. That's but another show for you. That's, yeah, I, I, I could, <laughs> could think about that, yeah. Now, what about the occupational therapist? Were they suggesting particular things to do or kinds of things that you can, well, that you can well, buy to accommodate? Yeah, they tell yeah. you what they do to come in to help you in your own home. Yeah. They make sure that you're safe in your own home, you're able to take your own showers, and, uh, and, and you know, they, they see what kind of help you need, and they try to get that help for you. So do they actually go in and look at the way the house is decorated with furniture to maybe suggest that yeah, they do. the they chairs make, should be in a certain place rather than right. where it is. And if you have loose rugs that right. you may trip over and yeah, they, yeah they, check all, they check all the rooms to make sure that you have enough lighting. And uh, I've also had um, telephone people come and speak because... Why? Um, 
Well, because they have uh, phones for uh, visually impaired people. They can actually speak to you, right? Yeah. If we, someone calls, like, I if have a tax bill is calling. I have you know, a talking telephone, yes, that's and great. it repeats the numbers I'm dialing. So if I make a mistake, <laughs> you know. Oh. I, yeah. That's, yeah. That's really good. Yeah. And once again, for a lot of for folks who haven't been kind of conscious of this, they just wouldn't even be aware of any of those options. Yeah, there's there's a lot there's a lot of good things that that I've speakers I've had, and lots of times I meet them when I go to the convention that uh, Mr. Eldridge puts on our state rep. Oh, the senior the senior fair. Yeah, the, there's the all vendors fair, there's yeah. all vendors there, and I walk from one vendor's table to another to see if there's anything interesting that would uh, be helpful to my group, and so then I inquire. Do you do speaking engagements? And they say, yeah, That's we good. would. She's good. <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So, and Agnes, how many people do you have that usually attend to the, the meeting? Well, I used to have 15 people, but uh, I've lost uh, five, three passed away, and two moved, went into assisted living. So now I'm down to 10. So there's room in your group? There's room, there's, always you're, room. You're always recruiting. Anyone's welcome. Any dues, any costs? There's anything? no dues, it's free. And are, are, all of, are all of your members right now Northboro residents or are there some people also? No, we have, uh, I have uh, Westboro, sometime a yeah. woman comes from Clinton and uh, most, of, most of them are from Northboro, but uh, we do have Westboro and Clinton people. And, and for, pe for people's benefit who are, who are thinking about this, is there a regular time that you meet so that they can see if it would work for their schedule or, do, or does that really vary? Uh, well, we meet the second Thursday of each month and we meet from one to three at the Northrow Senior Center. I got it. And uh, also I remind every member about the group. I call them about four or five days before the meeting to remind them. Just to make sure they're going to be there. To make sure, yeah. And now do you have that in the bistro or in one of the conference rooms there? No, it's a room that we it's have. It's in one of the rooms? Yes, that, uh, yes. Because you said you also work the bistro. Well, that, that so I do on Mondays. Do you bust I, tables? I do, what do I, you do? Do you cook? What do you <laughs> No, I'm not no. cooking. <laughs> Although she's a great cook. She's a great cook. I did, I did, I did, uh, we had an international Tuesday night meal, yep. and I did make uh, uh, something that night. But we had to do it in the commercial kitchen. We are not right. allowed to bring anything from home. Right. Because we have a commercial kitchen now. Right. The old senior right. center, we could, but we can't here. Well, they want to be careful too. I mean, they, yeah, they have to be again. careful. They don't want anyone, you know, getting sick or anything. Yeah. There was a woman who made all the uh, birthday cakes, and she had to stop making them. So now um, Hannah Ford's donates cakes for the donates birthdays. Donates the birthday cakes. Yeah, once a month, everyone in t only Northrow residents right. get an invitation from yeah. the senior center to for a birthday lunch. So yes, they I get. You, I think he knew that, and, and the friends pay for that. Which yes, is they really do. The friends. It's a wonderful them. thing the friends do. Yes. Well, Agnes, it's a wonderful thing that you do, right? I mean, the the fact that you're doing this program, and and, and once again, for people who are getting older, certainly, your mm -hmm. chances of having eye problems keep getting greater when you're older. As I always talk about, to, you know, folks who were originally involved in the, the Americans with Disabilities Act, and you always thought, oh, that's just kind of them, these kind of random people who've got a lot of problems. Yeah. And it's only now that you realize, no, that's me, you know, in 10 or 20 or 30 years, right? So, that, right. so to have that available for people, mm -hmm. of course, it's like what are so many things that Kelly Burke does there, right? And, yeah. and what what's, I think has always been so great about your, mm -hmm. your, your friends group is you've got this way that you can kind of experiment there because if there's an interesting program the friends always seem to have money you know i know they buried in their back in their backyard you know but they always seem to be able to <laughs> pop up with money to try something and then if it works and then it, you know you try to get it to be self-supporting but but having mm -hmm. that variety of programs is just wonderful it and, is and having you on is just terrific thank, thank you thank you very thank much you. for this we really really appreciate it so anita thank you th again for being willing to do this, because she keeps doing this. She keeps bringing you know, these just wonderful folks. Thank you.
I hope this was helpful for you, especially, you know, if first, first, if you haven't been to the senior center, because the bottom line is there's a ton of stuff to do there, right? And you don't have to volunteer for 30 years. If you go there and you want to just do a little bit, that's, that's fine too. Yeah. Second, if you've got vision issues, right, this is just a wealth of information as well as being in a group where you've got shared experiences so that you may really be able to learn something in terms of, you know, how to better equip your house, what your diet should be, a whole bunch of things. So, you know, you know where it is. You got to get down there. I bet she'll be there. It looks like she's there a lot, right? Uh, so thanks again, Agnes. Thank Th you. Thank you, Anita. And we'll, see you, we'll see you again on the next uh, um, installment of Frank and Mary here in Northbrook. Thank you very much.